Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is facing new allegations of sexual assault. This time, a woman claims the rapper drugged and sexually assaulted her in New York City back in 1991. Diddy cannot seem to catch a break. He is being dragged back to court with lawsuit after lawsuit being filed by women who claim that he abused them at one point in their lives. And now, footage of a man confessing Diddy's crimes to cops has finally surfaced. Will Diddy finally be found guilty? Will he be sentenced to jail for his crimes? Is it time for us to say goodbye to Diddy forever? P. Diddy, entangled in law suits. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Footage of a man in an interrogation room spilling the beans on Diddy has taken the internet by storm. And it's not just Diddy who has been implicated. DJ Khalid and Rick Ross have also found themselves in the middle of the crisis. Both Diddy and Ross and Cat, they're all gay. Okay? DJ Khalid, Rick Ross and Diddy, yeah. yeah. But to understand why this mysterious man's confession to the cops has major implications on Diddy and whether or not he may face prosecution in the near future, it is important to first cover the bombshell lawsuit filed by his ex-partner Cassie. This lawsuit has triggered a chain of events that paint Diddy as nothing short of a monster. It all started on November 16th when Cassandra Elizabeth Ventura, alias Cassie, filed a lawsuit against Diddy in federal court. The allegations she made were nothing short of shocking. The singer and actress was involved in a relationship with Diddy from 2007 to 2018. Cassie accused Diddy of rape and a decade-long pattern of abuse. These allegations sent shockwaves through the music industry and left fans and followers stunned. After years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. With the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life, Cassie said in a statement. According to the lawsuit, Diddy exerted complete control over Cassie's life. It's hard to imagine the extent to which he allegedly manipulated and dominated every aspect of her existence. From her apartment to her car, even her clothing and medical records, Diddy had a tight grip on Cassie's life. The lawsuit suggests that Diddy's actions were driven by jealousy and a desire to maintain control over Cassie. The allegations made by Cassie paint a disturbing picture of a relationship marred by abuse and manipulation. It's hard to fathom the level of control Diddy allegedly exerted over Cassie's life. The lawsuit alleges that he engaged in abusive behavior, including physical violence and intimidation tactics. The details of the alleged abuse are truly shocking. Cassie claims that she was subjected to sexual battery, sexual assault, and gender-motivated violence. These are serious allegations that should never be taken lightly. The lawsuit seeks justice for the trauma Cassie endured during her relationship with Diddy, but that is not all. In the filing, Cassie depicts the mogul, head of her former label, and then romantic partner as a textbook abuser, luring her into what she first perceived as a fatherly, protective relationship, only to find herself in an unequal and violent sexual relationship. Diddy successfully kept her under his thumb through his alleged intimidation tactics, which consisted of blowing up Kid Cootie's car, dangling a friend over a 17 the floor balcony and asking her to carry his gun in her purse. She never went to the police out of fear that it would give Diddy another excuse to hurt him. Once the two entered a romantic relationship, Diddy and his inner circle allegedly controlled every aspect of her life. The lawsuit claims those close to Diddy turned a blind eye to physical abuse. Beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs staff and employees, the suit read, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Cassie said she never went to the police for fear of her abuser, Diddy. In one instance of abuse in 2000, 2009, Diddy allegedly kicked her repeatedly in the face, making her bleed, and had his staff hide her in a hotel room. Everyone around them who knew of the abuse advised her to go back to Diddy. According to them, Diddy could easily hinder her acting and singing career. Every time she hid, Mr. Combs's vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her, and those who worked for Mr. Combs's companies implored her to return to him, the filing stated. Many went as far as to explicitly state that her failure to return to Mr. Combs would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. Elsewhere in the filing, Cassie alleged Diddy forced her to take part in arrangements in which she had no choice but to plan and engage in sex acts with male sex workers while he masturbated. These encounters are commonly referred to as freak-offs. The encounters continued for years in high-end hotels across the country and sometimes occurred as often as once a week. Diddy took photos and filmed the encounters. Cassie would delete videos shot on her phone to no avail, and once she was forced to watch footage on a flight that she thought she had gotten rid of. Keep this in 
in mind as it will be important later in the video. Following a freak off in 2016, he allegedly paid a hotel $50,000 to erase hallway surveillance footage of an intoxicated Diddy throwing glass vases at Cassie when she tried to escape after he gave her a black eye. Cassie would take copious amounts of drugs to disassociate during these horrific encounters. These included ecstasy, cocaine, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts. The excessive substance use led to Cassie suffering from addiction. Just one day after filing the lawsuit, Cassie surprisingly settled with Diddy out of court. The terms of the settlement were not disclosed, leaving fans and followers of the case wondering what transpired behind closed doors. The sudden settlement has only added to the mystery surrounding the case and has left many questioning the true nature of Diddy's actions. But now, weeks later, a video of a man in an interrogation room, which was recorded back in 2018, has surfaced and confirms a lot of things that were in Cassie's lawsuit. From Diddy masturbating as Cassie slept with other men to the music mogul recording these freak offs. But who exactly is this man? And can we take anything that he says seriously? Jonathan Adi was born in South Africa, but his journey would eventually lead him to the United States, where he became a naturalized citizen in 2017. While his early life remains shrouded in mystery, it is his later endeavors that have captured the attention of the world. Adi wore many hats throughout his life, working as a fitness instructor, real estate investor, and even serving as the general manager of Pegasus Minerals and Gemstones, LLC. But it was his involvement in the adult entertainment industry that added a shocking twist to his story. Adi performed as a stripper and porn star for the infamous Dancing Bear website, leaving behind a trail of scandal and intrigue. However, it was in 2018 that Jonathan Adi would make headlines for an entirely different reason. On that fateful day, he broke into the Trump National Doral Resort, unleashing chaos and terror. The hotel is owned by former President Donald Trump. Armed with a firearm, Adi fired shots at the police and went on a tirade that shocked the world. His shenanigans did not end there. He proceeded to threaten an unarmed security guard, took out a revolver, and trashed the entire lobby, breaking computers, chairs, paintings, and glass. Jonathan Adi also tweeted disparaging remarks against former President Barack Obama, then President Donald Trump, and in an odd turn of events, hip-hop mogul P. Diddy. Subsequently, he fired his firearm both at the on-site police officers and the ceiling. He was shot in the leg by police as they chased after him, capturing him in the process and sending him to the hospital to recover from his injuries. Afterwards, Adi was booked into the Miami-Dade jail. Many have been wondering since that fateful day why Sean Combs was included in his tirade. The chaos and destruction he caused were a testament to the depths of his anger and the intensity of his beliefs. But what exactly did Jonathan Adi believe? What was the motive behind his actions? It was during the interrogation that followed the incident that the world would come face to face with the shocking claims of Jonathan Adi. In that 2018 interrogation video, Adi made astonishing allegations about his relationship with Sean Combs. He claimed to have a special and recurring sexual relationship with Combs and his ex-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would, uh, he would masturbate and tell me what to do with cash. Adi referred to himself as their sex slave, a term that sent shockwaves through the media and raised questions about the dark secrets of the entertainment industry. I was like a sex slave, okay? For them, that's what I was. But the shocking revelations didn't stop there. Adi also alleged that Combs paid him to keep their secret and that Combs belonged to the Bull, the black wing of the Illuminati. This claim added another layer of intrigue to the already sensational story, leaving viewers wondering about the true extent of Combs' involvement in the secretive world of the Illuminati. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boulet. The Boulet is the Boulet's a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. And it's the black people. The claims made by Cassie in her swiftly resolved lawsuit against Sean Combs are supported by Jonathan Adi's stories. She claimed Combs would make her perform sexual acts on several male prostitutes. She then asserted that Diddy recorded and masturbated during each of these interactions. Further, Cassie stated that Sean Combs had even instructed her to choose the men who were seeking sex from websites. Cassie stated that Combs' house and opulent hotels around the nation would host these drug-fueled gatherings. The resurfaced interrogation video provided further evidence supporting Ventura claims and raised disturbing questions about the dark underbelly of the entertainment industry. The story got even more interesting as Jonathan continued down the rabbit hole exposing the rituals that went on in the industry, some including blood sacrifices. While many of these claims are often quickly dispelled as conspiracy theories, it seems that there may be more than meets the eye. However, things get even more weird with the story. Footage from 2018 shows Jonathan appearing before a judge. However, that is the last time anyone has heard or seen him. Having exposed such dark and shocking details, 
Jones? Could the powers that be have gotten rid of him? The mystery surrounding Jonathan and his mysterious disappearance only make his claims more credible. One shocking detail that may have Diddy worried is that during the interrogation, Jonathan claimed that he may have kept one of the recordings of the freak-offs. Jonathan claimed that Diddy paid him for the recordings. However, they accidentally gave them back to him and he may have made copies. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. They gave it back to me accidentally, and it's possible I, I threw everything out, it's possible I can produce a copy. If this is true, then Diddy is in a whole lot of trouble. However, with Jonathan missing, it may be impossible to find those recordings or even tell whether he was being truthful. But with his 2018 statements matching what Cassie revealed, it is entirely possible that there is some truth to everything that has befallen Diddy. Only time will tell whether Diddy will face the music and end up behind bars. P. Diddy's criminal history. Despite Cassie and Jonathan Adi making some wild claims against Diddy, it is important to note that this is not the first time that the music mogul has been caught up in criminal activity. From shooting up a club in 1999 to abusing more women, Diddy's criminal past is nothing short of worrying. One of his earliest and widely publicized cases was back in 1999 when he was dating Jennifer Lopez. The two celebrities found themselves at the center of a scandal that rocked New York City. The night started off like any other glamorous evening in Manhattan, with Diddy and J-Lo enjoying the vibrant night. Nightlife. However, the atmosphere quickly turned sinister when a shooting erupted in a popular nightclub. The vibrant lights of Manhattan's nightlife beckoned, casting an alluring glow over the city that never sleeps. On this fateful night, the air was thick with anticipation as partygoers flooded into one of the hottest nightclubs in town. Little did they know that the evening would take a dark and tragic turn. As the night progressed, the atmosphere inside the club reached a fever pitch. The pulsating beats of the music reverberated through the crowd, creating an electrifying energy. The dance floor was a sea of bodies moving in sync with the rhythm lost in the euphoria of the moment but amidst the revelry tension simmered beneath the surface unbeknownst to the unsuspecting club goers a brewing conflict would soon erupt into violence it was a clash of egos a battle for dominance in the cutthroat world of entertainment as the night wore on whispers of a feud between rival factions began to circulate rumors swirled about a long-standing rivalry between diddy and an unknown adversary the tension between the two had been building for months fueled by jealousy and a thirst for power. The club's security team, aware of the escalating tension, remained on high alert. They patrolled the premises, their eyes scanning the crowd for any signs of trouble. But even the most vigilant security measures couldn't prevent the inevitable. Suddenly, a single gunshot shattered the air, cutting through the music and plunging the club into chaos. Panic ensued as clubgoers scrambled for cover, desperately seeking safety amidst the confusion. The once celebratory atmosphere transformed into a scene of fear and desperation. Amidst the chaos, three innocent bystanders found themselves caught in the crossfire. Two men and a woman were struck by bullets, their bodies collapsing to the ground in a haze of pain and disbelief. One woman shot in the face fought for her life as the nightclub transformed into a makeshift triage center. As the wounded were rushed to the hospital, law enforcement descended upon the scene, determined to restore order and bring the perpetrators to justice. The nightclub, once a symbol of glamour and excess, now stood as a haunting reminder of the violence that had unfolded within its walls. Diddy and Jay Lo were detained after a gun was found in their car as they left the nightclub. The vehicle was stopped because it was fleeing the scene and because it jumped a set of red lights. The gun was found lying in the car and was identified as one which had been reported stolen in Georgia. None of the four occupants of the car had a license for the gun. The couple were both charged with criminal possession of stolen property. Police arrested and questioned the couple after eyewitness claims that Combs fired a gun after a dispute at Club NY. Third person, Jamal Barrow, a small-time rapper known as Shine, was arrested and charged with criminal possession of a gun. Wardell Fenderson, who was Diddy's driver that night, testified that he didn't pull over right away and fled from the cops because the rapper shouted at him not to stop. After the chauffeur was stopped by police, who found a gun in the car, Diddy offered Fenderson $50,000 and a diamond pinky ring to say the weapon was his. However, in 2001, a Manhattan jury acquitted the hip-hop mogul of all charges brought against, which included four counts of illegal possession of a gun and one count of bribery. Shine, who was Diddy's protege, was found guilty of five of the eight charges against him. Years later, Diddy would find himself in more hot soup as he faced a major lawsuit. Well, Diddy's turbulent relationship with Cassie is not as messy as the allegations that have been leveled against him by multiple women. In 20 
2015, Diddy's personal chef, Cindy Rueda, filed a lawsuit against the music mogul, alleging a series of disturbing incidents. Rueda's lawsuit was a bombshell, as she made shocking claims of sexual harassment and unpaid overtime during her time working for Diddy. According to Rueda, she would often accompany Diddy on his travels, sometimes for up to two weeks at a time, without receiving any additional pay for the extra hours she put in. But the allegations didn't stop there. Rueda also detailed a disturbing incident that took place in August 2015. She claimed that Diddy cursed at her and demanded breakfast in his bedroom, where she shockingly witnessed him engaged in sexual activity with a guest. These allegations sent shockwaves through the industry and left fans questioning the true nature of Diddy's character. And just as with Cassie, on February 20th, 2019, news broke that Diddy and Rueda had reached a settlement, bringing an end to their legal battle. However, the terms of the settlement were shrouded in secrecy, leaving fans and critics wondering what transpired behind closed doors. In 2019, Diddy's ex Gina Huynh revealed that Combs physically abused her throughout their five-year relationship. She claimed he once stomped her on the stomach, causing her to lose her breath and also punched her in the back of the head. He was mentally, emotionally, and physically abusing me. He would always compare me to Cassie and tell me that I'm the bad one. She's a good one. She also said that everyone in Combs' circle allowed the abuse to occur. And right after settling out of court with Cassie, more women came forward with similar allegations. In the first lawsuit filed against Sean Diddy Combs, there is the harrowing account of Joy Dickerson Neal, a woman who has come forward with shocking allegations against the music mogul. According to the lawsuit, Dickerson Neal accuses Diddy of assault and battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, sex trafficking, gender-motivated violence, and the making and dissemination of revenge porn. These claims paint a disturbing picture of the events that unfolded in the early 1990s. At the time, Dickerson Neal was a psychology student at Syracuse University, and she had previously worked alongside Diddy in a music video. Little did she know that her connection to the famous artist would lead to a traumatic experience. According to her account, she agreed to go on a date with Diddy, unaware of the horrors that awaited her. During their encounter, Dickerson Neal alleges that Diddy drugged her and transported her to another location. It was there that he secretly filmed himself sexually assaulting her without her consent or knowledge. The violation she experienced is unimaginable, and the aftermath of this incident had a profound impact on her mental health. Days later, a male friend approached Dickerson Neal and revealed that he, along with several others, had seen the footage of the assault. The revelation left her devastated, plunging her into severe depression and suicidal thoughts. The lawsuit states that she was hospitalized for these mental health struggles, highlighting the profound impact of the alleged assault on her well-being. The emotional toll on Dickerson Neal cannot be overstated. The lawsuit describes her overwhelming feelings of humiliation, embarrassment, violation, and constant apprehension about who else may have seen the video. It is important to note that the lawsuit also names Bad Boy Entertainment and Combs Entertainment LLC as defendants, suggesting their potential involvement in the alleged crimes. In addition to Joy Dickerson Neal's allegations, another woman, identified as Jane Doe, has come forward with a deeply disturbing account of her encounter with Sean Diddy Combs. Jane Doe's lawsuit paints a horrifying picture of rape, coercion, and sexual assault, implicating not only Diddy, but also singer Aaron Hall. According to the lawsuit, Jane Doe and a friend attended an MCA event, where Diddy and Aaron Hall extended an invitation to an after-party. Little did they know that this invitation would lead to a nightmarish ordeal that would forever scar their lives. Upon arriving at Aaron Hall's apartment, Jane Doe alleges that Diddy coerced her into engaging in sexual acts against her will. However, the situation took a sinister turn when Aaron Hall forcefully entered the room, pinning her down and subjecting her to rape. The level of violence and disregard for consent displayed in these allegations is deeply disturbing, but the horror doesn't end there. In another room, Jane Doe claims that both Diddy and Aaron Hall forced her friend to engage in sexual acts as well. The trauma inflicted upon these women is unimaginable, leaving them with lifelong scars and emotional pain. Adding to the already shocking allegations, the law lawsuit also names MCA Inc., MCA Music Entertainment Group, Geffen Records, and several unidentified entities as defendants. The involvement of these entities suggests a broader web of potential complicity in the alleged crimes. To make matters even more chilling, the lawsuit details an incident that occurred two days after the alleged assault. Fearing that his then-girlfriend would discover the truth, Diddy reportedly went to the home where Jane Doe and her friend were staying. There, he allegedly choked Jane Doe until she lost consciousness. The level of violence and intimidation 
described in these allegations is deeply disturbing and raises serious questions about the character of the accused. As the legal battle unfolds, the public is left to grapple with the shocking allegations against Diddy and Aaron Hall. Earlier in the year, the music mogul was also mentioned in one of the most infamous murder cases in the history of hip-hop, the murder of Tupac. Keefe D, a known associate of Diddy, was arrested for his role in Tupac's murder. As it turned out, Keefe D was on a media tour where he spilled the beans on what actually happened the night Tupac died. Shockingly, he revealed that Diddy was heavily involved in the rapper's death. According to Keefe D, Diddy had wanted Tupac and Suge Knight dead for a long time. Remember, this was the time the West Coast and East Coast beef was at its peak. He took me downstairs and he's like, man, I want to get rid of them dudes, man. I was like, we'll wipe their ass out quick, man. It's nothing, Keefe D revealed. At the time, Diddy had sought the protection of Keefe D, who was a gang leader, since the hip-hop beef threatened to turn violent. However, there is little chance that Diddy will be prosecuted for this. Greg Kading, who was crucial in letting the world know about Tupac's murder, thinks that it is highly unlikely for Diddy to get charged. Puffy now is, um, you know, an iconic music figure with hundreds of millions of dollars. First, Diddy is a multi-millionaire with enough to pay the best lawyers and keep him out of trouble. Second, Keefe D's credibility may not hold up in court since he is a convicted drug dealer and has even perjured himself in the past. And you're not going to have a very practical likelihood of prosecuting him based solely on the testimony of a known drug gang member, convicted drug dealer, ex-convict and who has changed his story several times. While this may be true, it will be interesting what transpires of all the other cases that Diddy is involved in. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.